Yeah. Anyway, time machine live now. <coughs> we are live. No. Okay. I believe we have a live feed. Do we? Oh, okay. there we go. No. Nope. Okay, now we do. Then I'm going to share that. Tell the people. Okay, we are back. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. We're back. We got Brent Beller. We're taking a break, and we are ready to get some uh, yeah. some stuff going here. What's the stuff? Well, you know, we'll talk. <laughs> okay, we'll talk. Yeah, because it was anything else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. It's on my TikTok. All right, see you later. No. This is for my TikTok people. See, there's Brent Miller. There's Brian Dobson. Hey, hi, friends. There's Hello. Carl Willems. I was on. There's okay. Kenny. And we're on Instagram Live, but we're also kind of on TikTok. I'm just gonna be on TikTok for a few minutes. Thank you for joining. Hi, Jimmy. We're talking about voice acting and, and anime and stuff. We, we're we super live. We're animated voice actors. We're animated voice actors. That's how it works. Yeah. And we have some good questions that we uh, should be attending. Yeah. I, we, I think we've got an update up here. But um, I have a question. Hmm. What's with the Jen Ro D DVD back there? I, yeah, um, who's Jen oh, Rowe, that, I, I was going through some stuff uh, yesterday, and that came out, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I've had some rewatchability right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. And I know that you particularly appreciate it, so well. I thought I'd leave it out because it would catch his eye. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jen that was Rowe. Carl was part of that. First feature-length uh, feature. Yeah. yeah. Really? And a good one. That. that you directed? Mm. Oh, yes, he did. He knew exactly what he was going to like. Oh. I knew it. Yeah, yeah. Had him so, from the get go. Um, so we're on we're on Instagram Live, but we're also on TikTok Live, and this is Anime Time Machine right there. And um, we've got some great questions uh, in our chat from Instagram that we can. Brent, who's your favorite Ninjago character? Zane, oh, man. that's not Me. fair. But I also really like Dareth because I like comic relief, and also I like Ronin, and also the Archer. Who else did you play? Well, there's a few other small incidents, but Ronan and the Soul Archer are my yeah, the, you know, Those are my favorites. Favorites. Do you hear that? Favorites. favorites. But also Zane, the guy I play. Zane's <laughs> kind of an obvious choice. Uh, Little ninja oh, Zane. You're on fire. You are. Okay, you're so what else? Uh, ice me out. Uh, Carl, do you recall much about directing Matt Hill as a uh, bad guy? Yeah, uh, Bass from the Mega uh, Mega Man yeah. 19 uh, Warrior. I do because I remember Matt got cast as that character, and he was like the brooding, dark, talking to himself, completely opposite of what you would think Matt Hill would be cast for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and He's I remember the, I remember he came in for that. He did a good job. He did a very good job. As he does. But the clients yeah. brought him in, and they were there for the session, and they talked to him for I, I'm not, I feel like I'm exaggerating. I'd say like an hour and a half. Just Whoa. going on, and poor Matt, you could see him. What do you mean by talking to him? Yeah. Just sitting there, just talking to him, like trying to describe the character, what they want. Oh, it's just like, give, let me just go, man. Let yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and then uh, I think, all in all, he really didn't have that many lines in the series. Of, <laughs> all <laughs> that for that. Hour and a half for two lines. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of wind-up, yeah. yeah. Stop, yeah, you yeah. there. <laughs> we still in the, I still in the, in the studio there. There's, a, I think, an a, a, a off-license, a non-licensed Base character up on the uh, above the window. Good Just lord! In the, in the in the array. The of sequel toys. is Treble. The Adventures of Treble. Now uh, we're being asked. Well, at least you are. I think. Mm. Do you get nervous when you audition, man? Ooh. No. No. Um, have I? Yeah, of course. Now, okay. The reality is, most of the, what we do is auditioned at home in our own studio. It's a little different. I audition all day long. So for me. That would that'd be a terrible life. Can you imagine me nervous all yeah, day long? Yeah. No, but no, I, I don't. Um, when I go in with people like uh, Carl, no, I, there's zero nerves. Zero. That's the thing um, with familiarity, right? If you, like, yeah. if you like the director, if it's an in-person audition, then the nerves go out the window. Like, But yeah, I'm, I think I need to instill some more fear in you then, it sounds like. Yeah, you do. You, yeah. You gotta, yeah. I'll work on that. I think but, you, it no, would have to be a, a, a new project in a new house that meant a lot and that might get my... Uh, if it was I, like I, Batman I mean, or something and I got to go for Batman, I'd maybe be a bit nervous like, oh. Yeah, I, different kind of nerves. So. Different yeah, kind different, of nerves, right? Excited nerves, like at the potential, but I don't think I... No, I don't think Well, I, I think you're at the stage in your career and most of us at a certain pinnacle where we get... Um, you know, over the nerves thing a little bit. I think, uh, like I said, more of an excited nerves maybe on a larger project at an unfamiliar place. Right. But after a while, you stand behind your brand. You stand behind what your product is, and um, you you like offering it. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. 
Well said, friend. Yeah. Brian. Yes. Well, well, me, me, me. <laughs> me, 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 me. Um, uh, for Brent and Brian, what were your favorite moments in the lines? His hot shot, red alert, and from my Armada. Favorite lines uh, from Hot Shot Wait, and for favorite Redwood. line moments. Favorite moments, yeah. Oh, moments. Okay. We Bad talked lines. about that. Our favorite we moments had, we was had saying transform. That, that was a dub, so <clears throat> it was we were alone, like we weren't together. Man, that would have been great. Right? That would have been something. But mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it was a it was a dub. So for me, it was just like every time I said transform, that was the memory. I I have that memory, and it's rare to have a in dubbing a single memory that's lasted. That Excuse long. me, that many years, I agree. and I wow. remember the first time. So I, I absolutely that, agree too. That's and special. It, and the, the cool thing was with with Transformers is that even after having that first initial moment to finally have that breakout and you transform, uh, there was I found an anticipation every time you do an episode and you knew that that was about to happen and it was going to be go time. Um, it gave me goosebumps. It was like a really cool thing to be part of and mm. have the opportunity to do. So um, yeah, super cool. Very cool. Yeah. We're getting some echo. That's me. I'm trying to turn this down. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm not very good at it. Hey, Brent, I shouldn't have pointed it out. What? Uh, can you say <laughs> hi to Danielle? Uh, is it Danielle hi, or Daniela? Daniela? I don't know. As Mr. E from Ninjago. Well, that's backwards, man. Be my life. Okay, wait. <laughs> 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 Danielle. Oh, 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 <laughs> Are you choking on a popcorn? What's going on there? No, I'm not. He's choking on a popcorn. Okay, then now's a good time to ask you what your favorite Disney movie is, then. Whoa. Uh. Whoa. You see? That's how you can shut him down. Uh, just like that. Flubber. Original version. <laughs> oh. Flubber. No, I, I guess... <laughs> that was a beautiful piece. I guess... The Shaggy DA. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, Classic. Classic. I guess because <laughs> the Marvel world falls under Disney, I'd probably be like a, a Marvel type guy. I like like the that's Spider cheating, the Spider Man stuff. You can just what? pick Star Wars and no. Yeah, Star that's true. I did. I just picked it. Star okay, Wars. There you go. Yeah. Come on, I love Star Wars. Yeah, I know, but that that feels like it's cheating. Well I okay Disney. Um you know the oh yeah oh you know um Lion King was really awesome. Mm. Um uh, Little Mermaid. Yeah, Little, oh! I go more Lion King for me. Oh, that was fine. like the impact of when Little Simba's falling. Like that's... That is crazy. And the voice acting with uh, Mufasa. Yeah. You know, what's his fate? James yeah. Earl. Which also, Mufasa. Star Wars. Darth oh. Vader and Star yeah. Wars. So is maybe that's why. Yeah, he's Vader. Oh, come on. <laughs> I fell for that one. I mean, I fell way too quick for that. <laughs> um, Jenna's asking, what's your dream vacation spot? Oh, really quickly. Let's start oh. with Brian. Um, I like Kailua in Hawaii, which is probably one of my all-time favorite places because the air out there is beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah. It's just you don't want to go there around Christmas time because that's where Obama likes to um, vacation to and like the whole yeah, island shuts down that. the Secret Service. Oh, so, forget uh, that. But in general, it's incredible. I do love it. <clears> and, <throat> um, I love Thailand and I love Vietnam. They're two of my favorites. And Cuba was great. So if oh you guys gosh. are doing um, <coughs> comic cons or conventions, Thailand, Vietnam, yes, uh, please, Hawaii, mm. and yeah. right, what's your favorite vacation spot? Um, I backpacked Europe when I was young. Ooh, and nice, nice. We, uh, we want to take our kids uh, backpacking, probably in a year and a half. Oh wow! And do Europe, and the main spot we've always talked about for years is Greece. Oh my, uh, me too, me too. For me, oh, nice. for me, the water in Greece was the best water in the world. Uh, second would have been um, like the Caribbean. Oh but, yeah. But for me, uh, Greece with my family will be the vacation. But the best family vacation I've ever had was Disney World. Mm. We've done that a couple times. Orlando. Yeah, what? just because oh. be the not not land. I've done land about six times, but World. Yes. Is a different experience, and yeah, that's the best family vacation I've had. Yeah, Greece. I'm going on the 23rd. The world? Well, I'm, I've got a convention in Orlando, and there's been an offer to go and stop by and do a little Disney action. Uh, get out of let, here! Let's get me. I in have on some that really bad trip. news for you. Uh oh. The um the castle burnt down. Did it? How? What happened? Oh, Disney princess. Castle. When does this happen? How am I only hearing about this now? Oh, it's a couple of days ago. News. That's it's why the tickets were so cheap. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> come and get a piece of something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, What's yours? Oh, me? Yeah. Gosh, I, I feel 
feel like I haven't been there yet. I love Hawaii and I love Mexico and Spain and Portugal. Mexico. Portugal was the most beautiful place I've ever been in my life. Mm. The most beautiful mm. by far. I've never been. But, you know, I haven't been to Croatia. Oh, whoops, did mm. I just blow it? Carl Willems, what's your favorite vacation spot? Oh, oh. Like, like Brent, years when I was young, I did the backpack thing through Europe. I would love to get back to the Swiss Alps. Mm. Ooh, Swiss wow. Alps. Yeah. That's a biggie. These are great questions. I never, I never hit there. I did 12 countries in I two and a half out. months. I went, yeah, I was 12, I was two and a half months. Nice. About the same. Wow. Maybe right. a little earlier than you. I mean, it's 90, 92. Yeah, that was there. earlier than me. And then again in 98. And I both, I never got to Greece. Meant to both Greece, times. Oh, I got there mm. by accident. That's yeah. another story. You need to find an anime dubbing project or a convention that we can all work on yeah. there. Yeah, that yeah. would be ideal. Yeah, I'm gonna give. Uh, I'd love to go to Croatia yeah, though. Can, yeah. can I give advice to people that are watching that may be considering a travel <clears throat> trip? Go to Europe alone, and don't plan anything. Mm, yeah. I went because I did that. I was I was in my <laughs> early twenties. I was like, you know what? Yeah. So I would show up somewhere, and then someone I would overhear someone talking about. Oh, we're gonna go to Normandy, the, the yeah, maybe. Yeah. And I say, hey, can I can I join you tomorrow? I, yeah. And then I would go let them do all the research, and I would tag along. Yeah, you end up traveling then, with people. Yeah, and then I, I then I keep, kept meeting new people, and whoever was more interesting, I would just go with them. <laughs> and so I was never I was never alone. And the yeah. the main thing, I would go into a, um, a hostel, and there'd be like ten people, and they need that one person to say this. This is like dinner time. You just go because everybody's quiet, and they're all like. You know, with the, putting their backpacks, they're all like securing with locks. And yeah. I just go, hey, I'm Brent. I'm from Canada. Who wants to go to dinner? 80% of them would jump up and, and say, yes. oh, yeah. And I'd be having dinner with people from Argentina, Germany, Aww. the UK. It was amazing. So for life experience, high recommend, but go alone. Unless you're a young female, please go with your friend because <laughs> yes. I would never let my daughters do that. <laughs> I did. I was 17 and I spent like That's a... That's nuts. Yeah. Well, because I was in a show and the show got canceled. Oh, right. I was a showgirl in like feathers and rhinestones. Well, were you wearing that when you backpacked? No. Damn. That was awesome. There was no backpacking, but we did go around like the, the we broke our con our contract with the Spanish government that made all the dancing shoes. Yeah. And uh, Jimmy Patterson was backing this. If you're from Vancouver, you'll be like, oh, oh my yeah. lord. Uh -huh. And uh, that just and, means a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money. But it was a ridiculous show. It was three hours long. We were playing theaters that were porn houses during the week. The stages were raked <laughs> stages in Europe, so like some of our props would roll down the stage. And um, and it was, the whole thing was ridiculous. And then they, they canceled and they said, you've got to scatter, the Spanish government will come after you. And we're like, oh! Run so away! Like, uh, wow. So people were like taking costumes and stuffing them in their suitcases. I took a pair of shoes that was too small for me, a pair of bobby socks from the Elvis number, and my wig from the Elvis number. Run! And I put them in my suitcase because <laughs> those are valuable assets. <laughs> and you and I handy gosh, on the road. I need that wig. Wow. <laughs> I then like went to Spain, traveled around Spain for a month with a couple of people. I was a fifth wheel, then I was a third wheel. And then I was by myself in England, like a mm. oh. for a month. And I, I bet Just you, an that, idiot. I bet you though that that matured you a lot during that time. Well, I guess so. <laughs> the curve of life. Hey, you're Isn't on that your crazy? own. You're on your own. You gotta, you gotta. Yeah, you, you do learn all. You learn a lot about yourself. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it depends on how sober you I, are. I bought a bazooki. <laughs> I bought a bazooki. So you'd appreciate. Oh, yeah. Well, you guys. Who's a bazooki? Uh, well, uh, so instrument. So I. I play guitar, and I was yeah. a month into my travels, and I was like, I was your fingers. I was dying to play, and I was in Athens, and they had um, bazookis like the Greek uh, instrument. Yeah. So, it's like, so I went into it, all they sold was bazookis, and I bought one because it, it went on my back. <laughs> bazookis are us. Bazookis are us. You see, you're running around playing this thing. It, it, it attached, it attached yeah, to my thing, <laughs> but I had no idea how to. World. I have no idea how to play it, so I would just tune it like open. And then I just go sit at a find beach, your own thing. sit at a beach and yeah. find my own jam. I still have it. It's hanging up in my office. That's great. Mm -hmm. Getting it done. Bazooki clubs. When I was backpacking, <laughs> I came through uh, Prague, and I bought probably the stupidest thing you could buy when you're backpacking because you got to be able to carry it. And I bought a a second backpack. No, a marionette with the long hold, like with the <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have four of those. With, with I the, have four. With, with, not with the in with Prague. strings, but also with the uh, the, yeah. the, the bar. Yeah. Oh, it was no. impossible. Uh, I didn't have the bar. I didn't have the bar. I it was ceramic. So it, it was very delicate. Yeah, it was dumb. I bought crystal too. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I bought the. Yeah, uh, I need this. They had the, yeah. they had yeah. the little wood handles. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I bought four of them, 
And then the, my problem is I would do comedy shows with them yeah. around people. And then inevitably, two of them always did an inappropriate thing. <laughs> 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 the strings got tied. Yeah, like, 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 only two? <laughs> like no, they? I didn't have enough hands, Carl. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so, you know what? You we bring got, a friend. Like we've got did. like two people on um, TikTok that are on this live, and oh, one of them is your nephew, Tommy, and says hi. My nephew. Do you have a nephew named Tommy? Or is it Tommy? Oh, this isn't going well. Is it Tommy, Tommy? I don't have a nephew named Tommy. Tommy. <laughs> Awkward. Okay, don't worry about it. Don't worry about At it. At least I don't think I have a nephew named Tommy. Just say hi, should, Tommy. Should we pull hi, Tommy. Up? Whoever okay. you are. Can you? I feel terrible if I actually do have a nephew named Tommy. Yeah, you better sort that out. Well, anyway, we'll review our notes. Yeah, my notes on my family. I have... That's awkward. It's okay. You never know, it's right? Okay. Jeez. It's okay. Okay. You you can't be everybody's uncle. Right. Um, what would the reaction be if Auntie Lofty met and <laughs> fell in love with Skybeak? So here's the thing. I don't know enough about Skybeak. Skybeak? That's I my character. Really. What? I played Skybeak on My Little Pony. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh-huh. Well, we're getting a little further now. Um, all right. Hey, Skybeak, it's good to meet you. Well, hello. How are you? Fine. Just doing my netting over here. Yeah! I think it would be a wonderful. Uh, it would. That would be a little interaction that could go a long way. It, it could. The uh, thing is, I'm spoken for. Oh come on! And she's amazing. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> I guess that ends that then. But um, you know, there was, there was some real hopeful action. But... <laughs> Thanks for that. Scene. Sorry. Yeah. Ah, uh, fun memory doing Rudolph and Island of Misfit Toys. Maybe? Oh, I did. Sophron, we're being asked if we remember Inuyasha <clears throat> back in the day. Um, oh, in Yasha. But show. first, the Misfit Toys. Now, mm -hmm. I, you're, you weren't in the Claymation production, so, were you? So, this was at the start of my voiceover career. They did, um, remember the the original one, right? Like, it's blow, um, with Rudolph and the, yeah. I'm, I'm Hermie, the dentist. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love so, that. So then they yeah, did a, um, yeah. and then that, yes, and yes. Then, yeah. And so, years later, they recast, or not recast, but they did an, another they did one. It. Yeah. Yeah. And... I auditioned for like Hermie and all that and didn't get Hermie, but they threw me a small little character with big glasses. I can't remember his name, but it was just like, blow your nose, Rudolph, and said a few things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that guy. I, I, I can't remember. Uh, oh, I remember that guy. Uh, Hank or so. And didn't but, he have, but I was just this like yeah. dorky guy that would be like, come on, guys, let's go. You know, and yeah, yeah. he was like the valet of the whole situation. But, kind yeah, of but I knew, but I knew what it was <laughs> because that I remember that show played every single Christmas when we were kids, right? Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. And so yeah, it was cool. So it was cool to get a part, even though it was small, a small role. But Ooh, so my experience was, I don't remember doing it, but I remember <laughs> liking the fact that I got to do that because it was a, a movie that I think it aired for like 30 years in a row every Christmas time. Still? When, yeah. Back when there was cable TV, we now it's it, like yeah. streaming right now, but, yeah. but I would have liked to have been the, the uh, uh, nowadays, I would go. For, I would love to be the monster. The abominable. The abominable yeah. I, know. He, yeah. I don't know if you guys have looked at uh, Brent's account lately, but he's got some absolute beast, double beast post on there. Is that something you wind up teaching people a lot? I'm kind of um, just. I yeah, I did a creature. So what I did on my latest YouTube videos, I did a creature demo, and just because a lot. Um, I saw that. Oh, thanks, bro. Because. Well, you didn't say the rest, so maybe, maybe I don't. Yeah, I don't know why I said thanks. You didn't say it was good. So I let, thought me it was take that, let me take that back. It was a bit uh, terrifying. Yeah. I but, saw it. I have some notes. <laughs> I say, Carl, you're not allowed to speak. Um, but the the um, for me, not a lot of people do creature demos, and creature roles don't typically come up a lot in animation. It'd be like, oh, we got this guy in. Let's get him to do this monster, or whatever. But I mm -hmm. wanted to showcase um, stuff to producers and whatnot that they might not know that. I can do that stuff. In fact, I think I do some of that stuff better than others, like other stuff. So I did a demo and recorded it, and it's on my my latest cool. YouTube. On my, if you want to watch me act on the spot and how I created the demo, it's on my YouTube channel. But I love doing. Now, my first creature role that I got cast in was playing a pterodactyl dinosaur in, um, in an Inspector Gadget. Movie. Oh, Inspector Gadget! Yeah. Oh wow. And I so that one was that. cool. So I was doing all that. All that stuff, you know, the baby, you know, and that was a treat because 
back then there was only like there's a couple of go-to guys for creatures and i i, I wasn't one of them like they no one knew that i could do that mm -hmm. and it was uh through through uh dic dick right like mm -hmm. marcia i think was the director back then. you remember yeah yeah and i had a great time doing that so you know i didn't get to be Gong gong gang get mama, but I got, but I did get to be a pterodactyl, and then I and yeah. then he matured, he cracked and became older, so it went from that to you know, all that stuff. But yeah, I love creature stuff. Like honestly, I would do that all day. That's Me so too. Cool. I do. I yeah. do enjoy it. Yeah. Well. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Until you tear your larynx. <laughs> yeah, until you tear. Until you tear your larynx <laughs> twice. Yeah. Um, what has been some of your favorite memories of your classes? My classes, um, the people, like um, when I get repeat faces that take other class. You get to know the people, yeah, and seeing their improvement. Yeah, uh, is mm. a, oh man, that's a, such a joy. It's there, exciting. There are some times yeah. where you see where they start here, and they're not here yet, but they they've got to here. And you know that if they keep going, they'll, they'll keep doing better. Yeah. And so to see people's improvements, but honestly, every person that takes voice acting classes, they're really, they're, they're keen. They're, they're nerdy about it. Like I am, like they want to learn. Mm -hmm. And so they're, as you guys would know, when you do coaching and stuff, people, if they've actually taken the time and the money to hire you, mm -hmm. they've, they've done the first step of like, I want to learn. And, and that's the fun thing is seeing a progression and knowing that that, you've had an impact from what you said and then they adjust and you don't give up on the scene you keep pushing and then they do it and everybody in the room is applauding it's the best it is it's the best it's really amazing yeah. when they are watching each other have a breakthrough yeah yeah, yeah. when a breakthrough Very happens cool. it's oh, that's so cool that's mm, so cool. yeah that's real cool yeah um do you recall some of the best lines and moments as kid go on oh my gosh well i just like Leave my dad alone, and then it goes on for. Wait, this seconds. is Dragon Ball. Yeah, okay, I was gonna say if yeah. Dragon Ball. Don't you do extend that? Yeah, yeah. Ball, yeah. Ball, two hours. Yeah. Ball, oh, yeah. That. I haven't done my warm up. Remember, yeah, that that's a moment. I remember Kirby t uh, Kirby Morrow telling me about those sessions and just yeah. how oh, yeah. long. You so hold, crazy. You Over the enough. cut, please. Oh, that was too long. Okay, but, we'll do another one, just a little bit shorter. I might. <laughs> But you know what? I love okay. that stuff. I like I I've been with directors where they say, "Isn't that hurting your voice?" And no, it, it doesn't. Like for a lot, you're giving eighty percent. Yeah, eighty percent rule. Um, but for yeah. me, it's like it's 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 a chance to even showcase even more. And you never know if you do something like that where you're you try something different and then yeah. you mix it up a little bit. Then the director goes, "Oh, she's really versatile." Next time, yes, there's another absolutely. role. Everything you do yeah. in the studio, every. Like if a session goes a lot longer, that's like with auditions with Carl. I try to make him go to half an hour just so I can, mm -hmm. just so I. No, I'm just just, just so <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Now let me show you this, Carl. Um, yeah, yeah. You can't really do an eight-year-old girl's voice, Brett. Well, no, no. Let me try. Oh, we're yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have another idea. Um, yeah, I mean, a good yelling session actually is also such a great release. Yeah. Sometimes that's the one Cathartic. place where we can scream and yell and. Mm. Not have the cops call. Yeah. You get a good release. Not break from, uh... anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god, you guys! <laughs> just... Oh my god. <laughs> that is really I just asked you. Yo, yes, Brian. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Brent, can you do Galdandi? Galdandi? Is that how you say it? From Infinity. Uh, Str right. Strash. Galdandi. Hold what on a second. crazy name. Wait. Um. Um. Okay, so. You know, the easiest way that somebody can remember is just to uh, quick actually up. play quick, quick, quick look up. Quick, 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 quick clip. I'm just going to have some popcorn over here. Mm. Do you give up already, kid? Oops! Do you give up already, kid? <laughs> Hold on. That's not me. That's Cole Howard. Amazing. <laughs> no, well. I'm here with Carl Tepper and Brian eating popcorn. <laughs> There you go. That was fun. My larynx. I think I need to go to the, yeah. He went yeah, over 80. Larry, yeah, went over 80. Yeah, yeah, over 80. Brian's got a good larynx, doctor. Well, are you speaking about, Brian? Right? Yes. Oh, go ahead. Do you want to have a look? Right, 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 okay. Yeah, so, flash. if you were to voice, this is for art or something, 787, if you were to voice a character from any classic Disney movie, who would you play? Ah. Like, um, to, re to, to have another run at it, kind of thing? 
I, I wouldn't mind Scar from Lion King. That was oh. cool. Hmm. Scar from Lion King would be a really satisfying. Yeah. He tasted every word. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally Nicolette. Today is one of my friends. Julia's birthday. She's a major fan of Ninjago. Could you tell her happy birthday as Zane? Aww. Oh my God. Juliet? Was that it? Mm -hmm. No, Ju Julia? Julia. 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 Yeah. She's Nicolette. All right. Here we go. Thank you, Nicolette, for being so kind to your friend, Julia. Julia, happy birthday from Zane. Oh, I almost screwed up my own name. Hold on, let me redo. Redo, redo, <laughs> Kenny. Take Delete, two. edit, edit, edit. Take two. We're going to grab two. another one. Guys, we're going to grab another one. That was amazing. Well, we could fix it. Or we could do Nicolette, it. okay. Nicolette, thank you for being such a good friend to Julia. Julia, happy birthday. Ninja, go! Bye. <laughs> Saffron. Oh, we did Dragon Ball promo with Lelania Lindbergh as Bulma, right? Yes, Lelania was a fantastic Bulma. Mm -hmm. I really loved her Bulma. But she was so. Bulmatic. Cool and strident and like. Sassy? Sassy. She yeah. was so sassy, yeah. but it was but it was totally like likable at the same time, which is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You could have just said, wow, she's not very nice, but she was really awesome. Oh, she was great, yeah. Damn. Loved her, yeah. What was her, is she, she played a character in, um, uh, oh, what's the show? No, I'm, I can't think of it. I'll, I'll come back. I'll get back to that. Yeah, back to that. Does she still act? I don't, not, not voiceover that I'm aware of. Okay. Hey, Jeffrey S. Oliver, <clears throat> are there any projects you didn't work on or almost worked on? you really wanted don't hurt our feelings with that question oh i can't tell Gosh. you how many times mm -hmm. i heard him let's begin i can't tell you how many times i've come second to andrew oh francis my God. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that whole, between that you whole... and andrew francis oh yeah i would get that. Uh, andrew, uh, 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 i get that with some of my very best friends as well and you're just like okay. yeah okay. i um i was like an andrew francis too your friends <laughs> told you that. yes oh that's okay. awkward but We're still friends. <laughs> you're oh, I was gonna say I, I I came down to like four callbacks for Ed Ed and Eddie, Ooh. for Ed Double D, and then um, oh well. Let's just say mm. I was almost a lead pony on the latest Friendship Is Magic. I was almost. Yeah, me, me, I, me and one other person. I think it's happened to all of us. It yeah. happens but all the, the time. You, you can't think that way. You have to think of your blessings of what you've. Well, you've you done. also have to done. realize something great's gonna come along. You know, when yeah. one door closes. Can I give you a story? Yeah. There was a show called uh, uh, Dragon Tales. Mm -hmm. And I knew the director, and he told me, he goes, are you sitting down? I go, yeah. He goes, you're the pick for Ord um, for the, uh, hold on, Columbia TriStar. Okay. Right. And I went, this was when I was going to Europe. Right. I had a right. backpack trip. Oh. Ha uh, that, so he goes, 90% of all of these part, like they've, the Columbia TriStar wins. Versus right. the broadcaster when they were talking. And I'm the number third choice for the broadcaster. Right. But Columbia TriStar, 98%. So he's like, so can you cancel your Europe trip? Now at the Ooh. time, I'm young and a lot of money was, it was 40 episodes. So yeah. I'm like, I could always postpone my trip. You know, mm -hmm. that idea. So then on the weekend, I'm thinking, oh man, this is going to be great. And then on Monday, he gives me a call. He goes... Ah, uh, sorry, man. They went with the, the other guy because Ooh. because <laughs> oh, Columbia Tri uh, Columbia TriStar won ninety percent of the arguments. They finally had to give one to the broadcaster, oh. and, and Ty Olson did the role, and he kind of did this hey, oh, good, sort of round thing, yeah. and he did a great job of it. But my and my version was actually different. Nowadays, I would probably copy what he did because it was better than <laughs> mine, I think. But that was one where it was like you probably got it, then you don't have it. But it's yeah. okay to not have it because I then went on a best trip of my life. So right. you got you to look at your blessings. And, oh, yeah. and, and for me, yeah. Zane, honestly, Zane has been a massive blessing because it's been like having a part-time job every year for like 11 or 12 years or 13 years. So mm -hmm. great. So in it's our nice industry, to that's <laughs> tough. That's tough. Like it's we, unusual. Yeah, yeah. And, and our industry is, goes up and down with where shows go. And so it, back in the day, like my wife Nicole um, and I at one point, Right before 9-11, we were on combined 16 cartoon shows between us. That was including anime and prelay. 9-11 yeah. hit, we went down to one. Yeah. 
and that's the industry. Like it, it, it was a just, big change then. Yeah, that was, yeah. Wow. It was one of our yeah. first big yeah. changes. Because yeah. yeah. it was like let's, you know, and it makes sense. Let's keep the money in the U.S. and whatnot. And then eventually, American producers started to come back to Canada because it's cheaper and whatnot. And then the Canadian dollar went up. That was yeah, helpful. that did not uh -huh. not helpful. Yeah, no. Uh, that was a big change for us voice actors. So we went from making, yeah. having a pretty good living to some of us like you're you're scraping, and then you got yeah. uh, call your you got to reinvent yourself. And that was really when the shakeup. Then technology came, and people were building home studios. You got to start be, you know, being very versatile and not just relying on uh, you know the commercials and animations you might do out of Vancouver. But um, yeah, yeah, very different. Yeah, that's big shakeup. Yeah, big. Um, Yovan uh, is asking about speaking of all that. What was it like voicing Andre? Oh, how do you say his name? <laughs> I don't remember. What Smirnov I don't, uh, yeah. from Mobile Gundam. I don't remember. Zero zero. Mobile Dude, Gundam. I don't remember voicing on. If you told me you didn't voice Andre Smirnov, I'd probably believe you. But I've seen on the internet that I voiced him. That was so <laughs> long ago, and I. But I can tell you that my experiences, I, I have never, ever once had a bad experience voicing anime. Never, like I've never not enjoyed it. Um, I, I've been, actually, to be honest with you, I've enjoyed mostly the more recent stuff that I got to do at Ocean um, for anime because you know Dragon Quest, weren't you? Well, that was the, the, that that bird character, right? Yeah. But, but I also here I'll, I'll, I remember I brought some notes. Oh, did you do Tobot? Uh, Tobot. Tobot Athlon. I think so. I know there's been a few different. So Matt, Matt Hill, who you guys brought up, I think he was one of the, we were kind of transformed, yeah, yeah. we were, tra yeah. I don't know if it's the yeah. same one, but I, I played one that was like a medical one, I was like a, yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, and, and, the ambulance. Uh, yeah, and I liked that idea of being able to do like stuff, but like a little bit more man, like I've moved into, or at least Ocean has brought, moved me in a different category right now, nice, nice. from like the younger action person to the more middle-aged action guy or that just cooler voice i don't know how to describe it but it's a bit of a different role more of a grown-up more of a grown-up yeah a grown -up? yeah and like the wiser the, the gintama and then the world trigger series i did a couple oh. characters on that show oh you, you who did. are you on world, world trigger? trigger okay i'm um, two people i got our uh, arafune and yeah. kanbanian arafune is the main one yeah he's a guy with a baseball hat and he's a sniper I liked being that guy because he was oh. a sniper, and I think I was like an agent guy, like an agent, like a, it was like agents in suits of glasses. No, okay. yeah. I was an, one of the agent guys, and then cool. him. I got but, to be uh, Yotaro Rindo. You're not my mom. Did you, did you watch all the stuff that you do, like the series? No, not all of it. Trick question? Yes. Trick say, say yes. And and a trigger voice saying just like bail out that kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. It's a fun, fun I show. don't know if I answered that question. Oh. I think you did a great job. Uh, Dirk Dot, mm -hmm. do you remember directing voices for Zoids, New Century series? Zoids. Ah, oh, they're Zoids. I, I was looking at that. I, I don't know that I did. No, we sure did. Was that James? Did I? I don't know. It was you recording. Zoids? you. Because I, uh, I, uh, I, I think think it was it Actually, I think my wife had a lead on that. I think it was done with Terry. No, I think really? that was done. It, it I think been. it recorded yeah. at Coco, and I think Terry Clausen oh, was the director. I and I think Brad Swale was also a part on that, one of the leads. There was a few different Zoids. Yeah, yeah there's, I was there's in a. One Zoids, I was in Zoids Fusers. I, I was think. in Ocean Zoids. Right. <laughs> oh, Saffron yeah, I'm seeing Rob Bakewell and James Coral, so maybe not. Yeah. Uh, Wait, oh, that's not Terry. Sissy. No. Hmm. Oh, your cat's oh, back. Jimmy, oh, what's up under that table? Your bond is saying and confirming it was James Harvey. Okay, so that's sissy. good. I'm not crazy. Oh, oh, oh. I did just hear her. Oh, I did something on Fat Dog Mendoza, too. Yeah. What did you do? Uh, Sissy was yeah. a... I did, but I can't remember. Sissy was a was. television I did, I did presenter. Various. Yeah. She was a that's television presenter. That's the easiest one to throw out, right? I just want to say, what you hi, get hi, David. Hi, David. Oh, this is Brent Miller. This is really hot in the studio, you know? Getting hot. Holy moly. I know. You can't wear too many clothes here. Yeah, you should peel You'll off. be nude by the oh, end. Oh, Naomi Flugel. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Naomi Flugel. Probably like, hey. I love that. If you just leave that question as it is, how hey, do you feel when you guy. had to dump? I know, I know. I rub a dub I, um... I was dubbing. I would rub when I dubbed. I had someone one ask, once ask me at a con. One of the that. reasons I don't do a ton of cons or didn't do a ton of cons for a while was 
I just didn't know how to deal with some of the questions. And one of them was, how did it feel to be in the tube oh, for I know. episode 37? And I was like... <sighs> Claustrophobic. Uh, that's how it was, that one. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? That would have been the right answer. Instead, I'm just like... Yeah, know, but, but, are we, it, is it? Yeah. And I didn't do a good job. I was, I was flummoxed. <laughs> Another question for Brian. That's a tricky Brian, one. how did you guys feel when you had to dub as Hotshot and Red Alert during Optimus's death after saving Earth from the Hydra Cannon? He died. Armada? <laughs> Don't make a thing of it. Thanks for yeah. ruining Brent's yeah. day. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah thanks a lot, bringing man. up you know awkward. You know, I actually have, I actually have that series on yeah. Um, yeah. DVD. That was back when you had ordered DVDs. Cool I stuff. know little box sets and stuff. Yeah. Um, it was cool. I actually had that. Um, I, I, it was cool because and, and knowing what was going on within the scene at the time like that, I knew it was high stakes. So it, it was one of those where you just kind of uh, extra groomed, really made sure that you hit the beats and where it needed to be because the acting had to be spot on. Well, that's a really good official answer. Mine is I don't remember it at all. <laughs> I, I am sure it was wow. good though. I probably it was amazing. Did, oh. I don't remember it. Did, did Optimus die? Like that was an <laughs> epic moment. Did he, did he seriously die? <laughs> well, yeah. Art. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a shame. Oh, I didn't know that. It's a shame. Well, I did it. Don't lose the spark. Forgot. Don't lose the spark. But I did. I did watch if that. If you series. were to voice any classic Disney character, who would you play? Your, your, your audience really likes question. Disney. I know. Mm. Well, we have a couple of real Disney fans. Absolutely. And I actually really love it because those shows are because we're some Disney of fans. Yeah. favorites. Hey, is that Christopher mm -hmm. Miyazaki? Yes, it is. Hey, Chris. What hey. about a Disney character? What would you guys play? Someone said Scar. We already talked about it, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, we yeah. talked about it. I said Scar. Yeah. That was my, I yeah, just yeah, threw that yeah, one in the yeah, hat. Yeah. I don't know about y'all. Well, I so think that was the pinnacle. Chris is All asking whether Carl still mm -hmm. has that voodoo looking yeah, teeth, teeth necklace neck. thing. How did that, I remember that did come up in a previous. What? Yes, I do. Whoa, what the what? I do. Well, I, I think that came up in a previous. Like I think I blocked ago. that out. Right, right. It was like I bought this like a souvenir, and it was at the at the time I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. Fantastic. And it's like a like a like a little mobile hangy thing. Sure, it's, I'll get a teeth. It's like a little like a head and arms, and then there were like teeth hanging by st from strings. The ultimate souvenir. No but then after eyes. I thought, I bought it. I thought that's kind of cool, and then I realized that's kind of bizarre and maybe even a bit creepy. What? Well, where am I going to put but this? So what are people going to think of me? Yeah. You still do have it. Yeah, it's hanging above the bed. Uh -huh. No, oh. downstairs. It's okay. downstairs. In the basement. <laughs> yeah. In a locked drawer. No, it's out. Room. It's out. But, really? Yeah. Okay, Shaf, you ready? Oh, you said Is... previously. Oh, you go ahead. Because I can't even see that. Uh, from Michael McArnold. Uh, Saffron said previously you redid the th first 13 episodes of Dragon Ball and right. Ocean. Can you tell us more about this production? Well, Was Goku called Zero in the episodes, not just the movie? No, so so when we move, moved it to Ocean, I feel like we re-recorded the fir those 13 episodes yeah. as little Goku. Yeah, because I did some little Goku before I moved on to Dragon Ball Z oh. Gohan. I'm pretty well, sure. Well, I wasn't directing it at that point then. Oh, Sarah, I might just have been. I don't. I might be I want to say high. no, but I might be wrong. No, I'm pretty sure we did. Because hmm? it was weird redoing like, stuff. Like, from the... like, I've already done this. Um, we, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If it was, I wasn't part of it. Um, do you remember working on the Barbie oh, yes, yeah. CGI Big movies time. back in the day? But yeah. That's for you, Brent. But I've also got a good Brent question here that i got to find out. I don't think I did work on the Barbie. I did some Barbie. I did a lot of Barbie. Barbie was Just fabulous. Saying. I auditioned for Barbie a lot, but I... Yeah. Yeah. I guess my Ken... Never got the part never, of Barbie? No, I tried. I got to be luminous. I tried. I even, I even nice, tried. Nice, nice. Wore the dress. I wore the dress and it yeah. didn't work. Okay, the, the big Brent Miller it. question of the work. day. Are you ready? Did I do Barbie? I, what, you I, did Barbie. No, I don't think Let's I did. Let's just say you did it. He's just Barry, I, I actually don't think I did have... <laughs> I'm Brent Miller. I He's the Farius for Barry. I think I might know the question you're going to ask. that Barry's guy. You too? Okay. Okay, Brent. Yes. How many times yep. did you get rejected by girls in high school? Oh, yeah, that's... Oh. This is great. Yeah, that's off... Uh, off that's the charts? Yeah. No, oh, this is something? There's something we hit a note? Well, no, that's from my interview with Sabrina Petrie. Oh. Who's from... Oh. Uh, she's uh, one of the leads on Ninjago Dragons Rising. You can and find James that Corbel's interview. Wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can find that interview on my YouTube channel. Um, and we did a little... It's actually, I think there's a, that bit is on my Instagram. Oh, baby. And there was a... We did a little... Well, I did a joke about that. And then she said, how many times did you get rejected? And is I, there a number? 
And I just said, I don't want to talk about it, and I moved on. There's a oh, number. so there's now a number. you need a number. No, but I'll, number. I'll give you I'll give you some advice. Well, stats. Oh, yeah. stats. stats. The advice. Give us the yeah, advice. I'll just give you some advice. This don't is, do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the, this, I think there's the, the this new generation of how they try to pick people up is is all like this, right? Like, mm. click, click, click. it's different. Yeah. The personal. So here's a way to always feel not rejected. Okay, here. So let's say Saffron and I weren't married, and we're we're at a we place. actually are married. Yeah, yeah. But he's but like, that's we different people. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and 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 I and I hit it off with her in the line of Starbucks. Okay. Right. Here's how you don't as a as a man never feel. So what I would say at the end of it would be, Hey, I would sure love to take you know take you for coffee or something um, <laughs> sometime <laughs> if you were interested or whatever. And I would nice, say nice. I would say. Here's, uh, let, can I give you my number? Can I give you my number, right? Yeah. Now, even if Saffron doesn't want my number, she still will take the number. Like if she, because girls are polite enough that they would be like, oh yeah, sure. And if she takes the number and yeah. puts it in her pocket and walks, uh, nice to meet you, walks away, I know she's probably, probably not going to call. If you took the number and you say, um, oh yeah, yeah, that would be great. Let me give you mine. And then yeah. now it's me. Oh. It's in my driver's seat that I have to call her in a couple of days, right? Uh, and then ask her out for yeah. coffee. Okay. But I've ne But it's foolproof because what happens is no one will say, "Yeah, no, I don't want your number." They're they're nice enough to take right. the number. Yeah. They put it in their pocket. They walk out the store, and they may never call you, but you never feel like you're rejected. No feelings are hurt. No yeah. feelings are hurt, yeah. and that's the way to do it. Oh, Saffron, why is your number nine one one? That's strange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the way I, I would do it, because then I never felt rejected. And my mm. answer to you would probably have been, first of all, we are at coffee, because already... Yeah, coffee. I have a coffee, you <laughs> idiot. Gosh, <laughs> could, okay, we could have said something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's very that's a, gentlemanly. That's a, that's a way to work it, right? It's gentlemanly, yeah. and it's and it's fair for yeah. both parties, yeah. I think. Your yeah. response would be, pepper spray. Get <laughs> <laughs> yeah. away from me, you voiceover perf. <laughs> <laughs> Heard of you? <laughs> hey, look at this one. They're ringing the bells and other voice actors here. They said, uh, Ooh, for, nice. for, This is for all of us, and wondering if we remember working with the other voice actors from motion productions such as Venus Sturzo, yeah. uh, Janice, Sean, uh, Ian James Cornette, oh, Corlett, yeah. Corlett, yeah, North yeah. Cornette, Corlett, and or Jocelyn. Well, what uh, of course, Joss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, I just very, worked, very well. I just worked with v Venus the other day for the first time. What? In the oh, yeah. say hi to her. Venus Sturzo is a great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the last time I s seen Venus. It was when my daughter Jada was breaking into the TV and film world, and she got Ooh. a supporting lead on a, a Hallmark movie. She was seven, and Venus was playing a, uh, a smaller part on that. She like oh, for, okay. for, the, for the day, and she right. came in. She seen me with my little kid, and she was so positive towards Jada, Aww. and so nice. And that was she's like, oh, I haven't seen you for a while, and blah blah. blah. And but that's the last time I seen her, Ooh. and like that's ten years ago. Wow, Aww. yeah, crazy. Know, this this family, his entire. Her. Entire family acts. It is yeah. pretty nuts. And are yeah. doing well at it. Like Two the television and seasons. A wife are all They're all actors. killing it. And yeah. it's, uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. My, my wife was actually probably, I think, done more anime than me. I think I worked with her before I worked with you. Probably. I Nicole's done I, I did. I was doing it before her. Were you? Yeah. But maybe I hadn't done it with you, right? We'll have to yeah, bring but her to But she's done it. She's done it. She was a Powerpuff. Girls oh my eat. god, that's oh right. I forgot yeah. about that. Like, yeah. Which one was she? Well, she was definitely in Starship Operators. She was, uh... <laughs> Wait, what sorry. are their names? I don't know. I was going to tell you She's mine, the blue but one. I can't remember Same who I blue. was. Wait, you were Bubbles. one of them, too? I was in it, and I can't tell you who I was because I can't remember. She was one of the main Powerpuff Girls. Bubbles. Like, oh my god. You know? Bubbles. Bubbles. The, the blue, blue one? Blue 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 I don't think blue blue she's Kenny, who was I? Buttercup? Melinda? Oh, is there a blossom? Blossom. Or it might be a blossom. Yeah. But no, she's done a lot of stuff. She, she done Are a lot of stuff. Of I was Powerpuff. You were that part? Z, but I don't know who you I was. You were the same part that my yeah. wife had? No, uh, no, oh, no, my no. wife got recast? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, Nicole. No, I was a different. I was a different. Oh, my God. No, no but yeah, no, my kids my kids. Your kids are amazing. Um, yeah. Uh, voice acting. I worked with yeah. Chelsea a lot. Yeah. She was yeah. a lead in the show. I, 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 she did Tobots yeah. uh, at Ocean. And yeah. um, did a whole bunch of episodes of Tobias. Yeah, like, she, yeah, she loves it. She's and and Jada, who's she's on a show called like film wise, uh, One Calls the Heart. Oh wow, she's got a, there, It's oh, incredible. Wow. I see her a ton. So so, Chels, Jade, if, if you're watching, way to kill it. You're yeah. you're amazing. That's but amazing. You guys have heart. a fun family. Yeah. We, we we do. It's a very um, 
there's some stress that goes with that. Oh, being sure. Of course. Scheduling and... I can only and, imagine and getting stuff. everybody yeah, to everything. Sure. And, but, yeah. but it's different. The kids are older now and whatnot. Yeah. But in the day, man, we had... We, we were in town <laughs> four or five times a week, either like with ourselves or ourselves and our kids and managing. And it cost me a fortune every time I go to Ocean because they have this little bakery. <laughs> you guys might not know about this, but there's this oh, little French bakery. Oh, well, they might it. not. Those oh. waffle houses. But there's this Those waffle waffles. house French bakery right by Ocean. Yeah. So if you drive in Ocean, you got your gas, your parking, then you go spend twenty dollars, thirty dollars at the bakery. Uh, in at, you, at least if you go, if you go with your family, it's good though. Yeah, oh, it's so good. If you go with your family, but then you're like, now. then you're like, well, that audition <laughs> cost me like seventy yeah. bucks in gas and whatever, and I didn't get the part. Yeah. <laughs> but those waffles. Are there little pastries? The waffles are insane. Oh. The ones, the savory ones. Yeah. Oh, I get upset no. because sometimes I get booked there's on a Monday. Uh, they're not open Monday. So I've yeah. been there. You're oh, just like, yeah, no. it's like that's a kick oh, in the, the crotch. Quiche. The quiche is the best thing. And then there's the quiche. Are really quiche is the best. Very good. Right, right, right next door, like yeah. to the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Ocean's in a good location for oh, foodies. Yeah. 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 Right, right near it is Granville Island, who has an amazing seafood section. Oh yeah. Amazing. Everything famous. Oh yeah. There's so much at Granville Island. Yeah, oh, cool. Okay, let's not go down the food run. Yeah, we should stop this. Yeah, we gotta stop. Yeah, stop. The go, the Gohan cookie cutter. Nathan, oh my god, that's still going around. Nathan, I, we talk about it every almost every. Uh, I show. know. Nathan made me one on a three D printer, and I love it so much. And the, the thing is, honey, I need to actually make the cookies before I bring the cutter. I'm not bringing it. With You're making cookies. Oh, is that the deal? I'm making You're good Saffron's ones. making cookies. Uh, <laughs> Next time. Is this one of those? Write it down. Hold, hold her to that. Yeah. yeah. We, want to, we want the cookies. Is this one of those cookies. milk and toast things? Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. The vision of Escaflone. Escaflone? Yeah, and toast. That show, that show got, of Escaflone. That show yeah. got over, dubbed over. Escaflone? Again? What? Why, we did our good work. Why do people keep doing this Kirby to us? Kirby Morrow was like, so mad. Yeah, like I, I'm so, mad. So anybody doesn't know Kirby, he, um, well, he's really well known, but he's he's passed away God a few bless years ago. Yeah. And uh, I I he, he was Colin and Jago with me, and <clears throat> so we're we're I've known Kirby since he like many years, we're like brothers. And uh, so brothers. I told him live in his <laughs> in my interview with him. You should watch. It's so funny. He finds out live that Escaflon the dubbing. I had no idea uh. what the show is. <laughs> And, he, and I go, so someone asked him, what, what is it, what, how do you feel about it being overdubbed? He got so mad. He, he was like, what? He was actually really offended. I can, yeah, I can, I can imagine. imagine. In a the funny rent. way. I can yeah, I find the out, there's been a couple of things over the years that... Yeah, like, why did Gundam see Destiny like, why get would... dubbed? I think I found out from Chris Niozzi, if he's still in the thing. I think yeah. I saw it on something he did. Chris gave I... me a couple bad news is about that, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so you, it's crazy. true, right? Yeah, they, they over... Yeah. Yeah. Well, why do they do that though? They're just spending more money. Mm. Don't kidding. Uh, who knows? We did good performances. It's not yeah. like I think I think Vancouver's performances that was a fan, are that was a yeah. quite well awesome. received that Hands show. Down, yeah. 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 And we don't have Canadian accents in our <laughs> Hey uh, uh Melissa, or maybe a little bit of eh? <laughs> Love and Darkness. We do. <laughs> have you guys ever met a fan of the con while taking them and thought Damn, they'd be great voice acting. My yes. God, how many times I yes. can't count. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. And some of them show us their stuff and we're like they keep doing Ooh. this you know that's oh outside. sorry that okay stuff. all right I, 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 a little bit outside there Seth. no red underwears <laughs> yeah yes absolutely that's uh it's amazing how many um and we listen to their fandoms yeah. and they're they're uh, awesome yeah and a couple of them have ended up being my students and it's yeah. uh mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of cool how that goes when you meet people and you get to talk and also it's like hey if maybe you're, something you can if do you're promoting um something you teach what you have to say Brian Dubs.com or something like that. <laughs> B B Dub com. B, B Dub com. Oh, B Dub com. Yeah. It's uh, that's an awkward name. For I, I'm not hustling students right now because I'm potentially Things busy. busy. But um, no. uh, you know, people do want to study and, and take work for between. I know Saf does classes. I know yeah. you do classes. What's your website? Are you doing any classes? Mm -hmm. Saffron Henderson. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's you. right. Okay. Carl does classes yeah, as well. So you're looking at a panel of all of us uh, that, <laughs> that do classes. So <laughs> any of you do want. To reach us directly, you can either send us something in a yeah. message here or yeah. um, whatever the case. And uh, any one of us would be happy to get back to you to talk about Mes what we yeah, do. Yeah, message us if you're if you're interested. Sure. There's all kinds of stuff to choose from. Yep. Um, wait, Seed and Destiny got redubbed because it was a request by the client for the HD version on the Blu-ray, but they included the original dub on the on the home release as well. Oh, okay. nice. Thanks, Chris. Wait, so what's the... What? Nice one, Chris. Because they wanted the HD version of the. Oh, that's so sad, though. It's, it's silly. Because it's like. 
How hard is it? I think it, it was right like a here. different cut. So I they know, couldn't just put... I know, but we're right here. We're right here. Oh, that's sad. We didn't go anywhere. That's sad. Okay, Brent from Nicolette. I am making my own Ninjago fan season of the main character is Zane. And the main villain is Echo Zane. Oh. It's gonna be called Revenge of the Robots. What do you think? Love it. First of all, Echo Zane is the most underrated character in all of Ninjago. He got left in a lighthouse somewhere. And I... There needs to be more Echo Zane. So... Zane comes across the first ro uh, I think it was the first uh, robot that his inventor made. Turns oh. out this like this rusty oh. guy that okay. does like really like uh, kung fu all over. And I I played him a little bit higher pitched and more goofy. And then <laughs> Zane was like awesome. the one that actually worked out. So he comes across his like brother in one season and then they just left him in the lighthouse and I'm like so desperate for them to go back and just like let that guy go out for like a boat ride or something like get him out of the lighthouse <laughs> but it's a great idea just do me a favor do the voices yourself because uh, you know um, I, I, I'm so feared of the AI these days that people will just like That's true. like all these creatives now that they can AI our voices they will stop using they will stop trying themselves right? You know yes know? absolutely like they'll just go like uh, they'll do the the easy way and go. Well, I can get a replica of all these characters, but do it yourself. We prefer you lose the your, fandom. You lo you lose yeah. your creativity if yeah. you just try to copy. We want the fandom. Yeah, we love your fandoms. Those are great. So do your best Zane impression. Yeah. Um, I saw a question about voice actors. Can you have to be a? Uh, can you be a voice actor without any experience? Well, we all were at and one I mean, point. Yeah, <laughs> well, you you absolutely can. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, there's a few people who for sure who weren't actors. Think of Adrian Petrie when he came in. He wasn't really, like overly experienced, to my knowledge, anyways. And he, he kicked it out of the He's park. He got Iron Man. Like it's um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if it, if he what his backstory was, but prior to getting into voice acting, yeah, but I just sure. remember him coming in and being a force to be reckoned with right out of the gate. Yeah, sometimes well, it works that way. Yeah, I mean, there's someone that I taught a few classes to who. Uh, comes from the actual animation side and she's an animator and then she did a uh, voice acting intensive program and is killing it like being mm -hmm. a voice actor mm -hmm. and I imagine her animation experience really helped yeah because yeah. she saw the other side of it and what could be lacking mm -hmm. when voice actors I, I have a, a student right now that I'm working with that um it's one of those things where he was just kind of, everyone kept on coming. You got a great voice. You got a great voice. Yeah. He ended up meeting my brother. My brother introduced me to him and I've been working with him. But now all of a sudden he, he's like really right out of the gate booking and becoming a it's horse. So exciting. It's just yeah. kind of like, he's got no experience. He just has this natural. But, that, but, but the, yeah. th the thing that everybody needs to remember is that you have a voice. Your voice sounds different than mine. Yes. And that, right? We all sound different. There's something unique about us. Yes. And the, Especially in the commercial world, like they want a, a diversity in voices. They don't want the same exactly sound all the time. And if you can use your own voice and add acting to it, then you have a shot for things like anime. Even like because it's mostly in your natural voice for a lot of those things. A lot, yeah, a lot, a lot, of, a lot is, of yeah. The, like, I mean, so, having a cool voice is, is part of the equation, but it's not the only thing. Right, it's not the only... Like, the yeah, acting, I mean, yeah, don't take the vo the acting out of voice acting. God, no. That's, that's, I mean, that's, that's actually important. the most yeah, important if, if you're, But if you're a bad... Like, on it, the, the reality is, though, if you can't deliver with the acting, your c career will be very short, and productions will remember. Yeah. We had that guy in. He was supposed to get it done in two hours, and it took three and a half hours. Well, are they going to call you next time? That's the reality. So you've got to be at that level when you enter that world but there's yeah. so much training and stuff you could do to get there and, yeah. and some people like adrian maybe he naturally it's just a god-given thing and he's got it right away you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely yep. yeah there's all kinds of hitting the right experience. note that's in your real house that okay. just uh find out should, from him yeah and if any of my students are watching this is the see i told you the same thing you are unique like your voice is enough mm -hmm. you don't have to sound the worst thing you can do is try to sound like a voice actor because we hear people yeah. do that, where they're like, well, yeah, there's already somebody it? doing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the yeah the, the best voice actors or a lot of the great voice actors don't like, to talk to them. They don't really, you don't go, oh my god, your voice. Yeah, it's what they do on the microphone, right. what they exactly. what they deliver in the in the studio. Yeah, and also I'd like to add, um, in when you have finally get into where you're actually auditioning, in my opinion. If, if there's a voice and you know you're not right for this and you know there's a hundred guys that are going to kill it, don't audition for it. Because 
if you do a real, this is my opinion, maybe only, but if you do a real crap job in that audition, that's what the producer's going to remember. Like, why did he even try this? Like, but if you send your two characters that you know you're going to kill, then no matter what, even if you don't get the part, they're going to remember that. Yeah. But if you send in a terrible take, I'm not saying don't try something. I'm saying if it's like a, if, it's if you like, know it's not, if you're strong. in your 20s, yeah. don't go for a 65 year old well, man. Right, that's my opinion. Right, it's that time old thing of where Unless don't spread McNeil, yourself hello. too thin. Mm -hmm. Find <laughs> what your strengths are in voiceover. Go yeah. for what your niches are and play in that arena. Don't go spreading yourself into something that you're spreading yourself thin, where thin where some other person is going to come over and just destroy you because it's their niche, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, that said, maybe yeah. there's a need for a new voice, and so there's that's a, true. There's it's weird, like but, you want to put yourself out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, but then, then it's really about knowing what is a great performance and what's a not great performance. And what are you strong at doing? You but know? that's what yeah. I found is now, like in the last few years, I've moved more into more villainy type roles. Whereas yeah. I knew before, I was when I was younger, I'm the young action hero. Yeah. But now I get to challenge productions to hear me for this stuff. Yeah. And but I knew before I'd always be like, oh, that's a Scott McNeil role. But now I know I can audition against Scott McNeil. Yeah. Whereas before I'd be like, wow, someone like Scott is gonna get that, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's different because you do change as you go on, and your skill sets change, but you also age, so you also are able to tap into some bassier tones that you might not have had, you know, when you were a little younger. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Are we um, have any fresh questions up or is there um, Or just take uh, up smoking and you'll you know, be able to yeah. do everything. <laughs> yeah, can we watch the next uh let's yeah, let's go to the next uh You guys are <laughs> No no. <laughs> uh it was Barry Watson in Dragon Ball. Yeah. Oh Barry Watson was used to come to Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And work with with Carl. Mm -hmm. Sort of co-directing, producing. Often he would sit back and just get involved in the yelling part. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He really loved the yells. Yeah. He'd be like, that was great. Now let's do a safety. Now let's do another safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, let's go do again. a third safety. He liked working you guys to death. Let's go bigger. <laughs> oh, boy. Even bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had like this cast party and he took us, he took us curling in North Van. Like... <sighs> To a curling <laughs> rink for the party because oh, yeah. he wanted to try it. Oh. And I'm actually, how was I, it? I actually think that's awesome. I it was those. very funny. <laughs> Barry, if you hear this, actually, very me. funny. Did you know that me and remember Rob Krang at Ocean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, Rob Krang, and Barry went on a trip to Mexico. Yeah, wow. that is so that's fantastic. crazy. Yeah. Way back in the, the three amigos. Days. Oh my god. That was get to know clients. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. No, Barry is a great party guy. I had dinner with him. A year ago, or no, oh, when I have? went to Kamehacon, oh, nice. I got to have dinner with Barry Watson. And it was fantastic. Oh, man, I'm not married. I met so Barry. Nice. Um, Barry. But I want to if he's going to take you to Mexico. You're going to get a voiceover remember? request there for you. Oh, I don't know if you're up for it. But, oh, um, oh. Yeah. repeat this again as Goku. I know you really can't talk to me, Grandpa. Oh, because I'm going to do it better this time. Hey, because I only did part of it last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm. okay, okay. <clears throat> I know you can't really talk to me, Grandpa. But wherever you are, wish me luck. I'll catch a big fish for you, Grandpa. I promise. Aww. Oh, kind of like did, that. Did you catch the fish? Oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, totally. That's good. Now, finally, I'll some conclusion. The fish tried to did get away. Did you know Optimus died? I just found that out. No, no, no. We're all real. We're all real. I'm Optimus. I'm Optimus. I mean, seriously. Because that, that means that I was the oh. leader. Hot shot becomes the leader. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, did I become the leader? Did I, become well, you'll have I did not. No, did I? I don't I think. Spin I, took a, I took we a stream. We don't know. Yeah, and I took a stream capture. I'll, I'll get back to that it's one. In that, it's in that cupboard that says, do not disturb or do not touch or whatever. It's all in there. Question for, uh, oh, there's another one. Can we scroll And for down? both of us, yeah. That was the, for Saffron was, do you remember working with Ellen Kennedy? Oh, no, oh, everybody's working with Ellen. Oh, we love yeah. Ellen oh, yeah. Kennedy. She's so great. She's amazing. I saw her for the first time at you about a month ago though i i met yeah. her as a singer before i knew her yeah, as an yeah, actor yeah. because she was a, a jazz, jazz singer, singer yeah. and we were she helped me with some charts that i needed for a jazz mm -hmm. gig oh wow wonderful she's wonderful an amazing person, person yeah mm -hmm. when, I, when i first uh, heard of her i heard you know people say oh they're a really good actor that was what i heard about her before i met her 
Yeah. Ellen Kennedy's awesome. coming in. She's really good. Mm. Uh, she's, if, if, that's, she's if you're lovely. that person, that's what you want. Yeah, you want people she's to be lovely. Saying that she was on so many series. So just, yeah. 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 Very cool. Uh, okay. I mean, Mizana Cook is the obvious one. They found the King Cobra. Oh my gosh, Nathan. Okay, so I posted something on my TikTok because I came across a very disturbing TikTok as I was falling asleep last night that there's a King Cobra on the loose in Vancouver. What? Is this a joke or is this true or Nathan just? Nathan a... feels it's been found. No, it wasn't okay. a joke. Oh. It's very alarming. So, uh, an exotic pet collector's screwed up. Is that what? Yeah, happened? I guess so. So I just okay. posted a little something to tell people to close their toilets. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Just helping. Wouldn't that be a surprise? Just helping. Yeah, and uh, Nathan, that's good news. We'll all sleep better. Can we come to Animate Fest in Dallas this July? Yes, get us there. I'd love to. That would be we wonderful. We just thing. need yeah. our uh, travel covered yeah. and a per diem. And yeah, and we're there. Workout guarantee. So uh, we're totally into it. We just need to be. We need to be properly invited. That's all. Mm-hmm. We can't just show up with our stuff. Yeah, knock, knock, knock. There's an interesting joy. So when voice acting, uh, do you usually voice when the animation is done or before the animation is in process? Now there's... And the that's answer a, is yes. Well, yeah, I guess, well, there's two answers to that question. Yeah. And yes and no. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And no. Yeah, or yes. Because yeah. there's the dub stuff that we do when we're revoicing it from another, where it's already been established in a different country, so that's a dub. Anime. Being exactly. Obvious. And then we have what they call prelay animation, and that's first round animation where the, the, it's a fresh project and where the first run people at it and they're animating to our voice. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have storyboards, so they've got like a, a, a layout. Sometimes not even. Can... Not yeah, you're right. In the so. best case scenario, yeah, we've got an idea of what the scene's gonna look like, but it's just pencil drawing or charcoal or whatever, mm -hmm. and then the Human director blood. has to look through that and make the performance work with the intended, mm -hmm. which must be a bit of pressure. Do you want to know? I've in my all my years doing pre I think I've only ever seen a storyboard like on a couple shows. Really, yeah. I think they had them for Me too. Kong. Some Kong. oh yeah. And I thought Very that rare. it was—I thought it meant that it was going to be gorgeous because they were talking about this gorgeous, like, oh, wow. Oh, it doesn't always live up, yeah, yeah. And then I would like there were so many scenes where my character Lua is like talking, and the mouth is not moving in the actual oh, show, like, and I'm like, shoot, what is going on here? Or the mouth is moving and she's not talking, and I'm like, no, oh, I was not a part of that. Yeah. And it can, things can go wrong at several places along the chain. Mm -hmm. My favorite storyboard story, I think I may have told you this, uh, maybe on, not on camera though, was uh, a certain show, uh, which I won't, I may, probably shouldn't name, but there was uh, one of the lead characters was in the storyboard was reclining and just for the storyboard, somebody had snuck in and they drew him very happy to see you. Oh, no. In a very Roman way. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, gee. Like, Whoa. Hello. Okay. Don't think that's going to make happy. the final uh, edit, but, you know. Yeah. Huh? But you, you never know what you're going to get. You yeah. work with it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Nothing. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, <laughs> Brenda Bryan, <laughs> did you guys thing. have another favorite character from Armada other than your own? Oh. Yep. Who? Um, your, bro your brother, uh, Mike Michael. Your uh, brother? Starscream? Starscream. Starscream and uh, Megatron. That's funny because I, I love... I guess we were thinking on the same page that I was going to throw it the same because that, that was a great series and they, I think Aww. those two actors did a really great yeah. job on it. It was interesting uh, I just see. really like villains. Me too. And, like Star, yeah. oh, Starscream yeah. and, and Megatron. It was David Cape played Megatron in that one as well. Yes, I was going to say Jerry, Gary Chalk, but it's not. It's but Gary did Op Optimus. Optimus. Optimus, that Optimus that's right. I mean, Gary did a great job too and I love Optimus as well, but... but I love the, the but Megatron, stuff. yeah, the, Megatron, they did a, Starscream, a pretty impressive yeah. job, I must yeah. say. So, yeah, good question. S Thank you. Same answer as me. And hey, I know. Same, same, same. I know. TFA ten twenty four says, "Hell yes, yeah, Starscream is the best in Armada," and that's in all caps. Yeah, so he agrees. I mean, besides our characters, of course. <laughs> yeah, if you, uh -oh. What are your best. tips on dealing with role rejections? Uh, breathe it and leave it's my motto breathe it and leave it I'm like mm. <clears throat> part the, it and part it at the audition hey, we all got our own <laughs> on the mic I own it it's all mine I own it I deserve it it's happening I own it and then I send it off and I release it into the ether and I go yeah not mine until it's mine so yeah, <clears throat> yeah. you know the thing about the thing about auditions is that even though you don't get the role you're also you're leaving um an impression with casting. Oh yeah. So, 
if you yeah. made a good impression, it will come around eventually for you. And so. I do some casting, and what I can I can tell when an actor thinks they're not going to get the role. In their in their voice, in yeah, their yeah, audition. Yeah. Really, I can tell when they're like, mm. just it's it's yeah. really they're cusping on something, yeah. Thing, but even good actors, I've I've heard it and I've been like, oh, that's too bad. I tried to not to let those. I tried to embody the process it. of owning the audition. Yeah, and then after the whole process of going through it to envisioning myself as being cast mm -hmm. and then putting it and out to the universe it that it's yeah that that's that's me it, at my best but sometimes me too. I just I don't float, have that confidence. I gotta let it float up in a pink bubble and then I say to myself mm -hmm. this awesome thing that someone told me many many years ago yeah which is this or something better now manifests for the highest good of all concerned very nicely Ooh. said. Yeah. Well, this or something better now manifests for the highest yeah. good of all concerned. And that allows me to want it. For sure. Um, to know that there could be something even better, I, better that I couldn't think of that comes of it. Mm. You know? And when I say breathe it and leave it, I've, it's, it's all about I breathe as much life into that moment, to that process, to that audition for that yeah. moment in the, in the room with the director if I get that or if it's... You're in the studio and I'm sending out an MP3. Yeah. But I breathe everything I have into it. Yeah. And then I got to leave it because otherwise we all have been sitting around and waiting for the phone to ring on but, something where yeah. it's just not worth yeah. doing that, right? Because the fact of the matter is, like, we, we just did a bit, some auditions not too long ago. And it was one of those situations where me directing the auditions, there was, you know, all any of these could be the character. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of what the voice tonality that somebody's gonna like, mm -hmm. the yeah. client's gonna like. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with this read, any of these reads. Mm -hmm. Like I'd be happy to direct mm -hmm. any of these people. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of they'll you know, know it when mm -hmm. they hear it. I look at yeah. you know? I, I look it's at a yeah. the, the the actual work is the audition, mm -hmm. and the job is the fun. That it's like the reward from the audition because mm -hmm. we audition way more than we book parts. Oh yeah, you but have I to also enjoy that. I also have a way of looking at that. Sometimes I think if if I didn't get the role, may, the, maybe the person that got it really needed it financially mm -hmm. at that time, right? I'm like maybe yeah. maybe I'm doing okay at this moment, but that person really they needed need that the job, boost. and that's why and I, I say feel okay with le with allowing my community to work mm -hmm. as well. Totally, that's why I like to keep that um, for the highest good of all concerned thing. Like because yeah, that the, person might need it more than there's enough mm -hmm. room for all of us to have all mm -hmm. of the things. There's more going on than just a. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, and and there's people that might really need it, and we might be those people one day, but the next day we're not, right? And yep. so, mm -hmm. I always think I didn't get it. Someone, does my friend got it? Cause yeah, I know most people. So yeah. I'm happy for them. Yeah, did, we know all of each other. Did so we? Um, you know? Did we answer the question about the demo there? Because that's kind of a poignant so. question. No, it's it just is like an I heard it. Question. Yeah, yeah, actually, I can. You know, I want to actually answer that one because Let's or, hear it. for sure. Start, anyway, well, Let's I just, say, I just think. Well, yes, you do have to nail it on the first try because you, you see? don't. You got to be laying down what is your best. Yes, of the best. I think you guys are going to have a fight, and I'm. Here I think for we might. It. Yeah. Well, it's a, what's the question? Okay, one thing I will say right there. I yeah. Do you? I heard you have to ace your demo, your voice demo on the first try. Is that true? I have I've seen a lot of beginning voice actors agonize over their demo mm -hmm. to the point of dude you just got to let it go. Mm -hmm. Like basically you're it's your greeting, it's your resume. Yep. It's it's a it's a resume. It's a calling card. Yeah. As you as time goes on your resume is going to change. You can redo your resume. Mm -hmm. It so, is. I I, I, I think some you, you need to put your best foot forward but don't like that's not the be all and end all. The, that's your foot in the door. The audition is the the next step it, it's just the, the first step mm -hmm. so i think it's important but but it isn't it isn't like throwing a million dollars at it isn't going to change things. no but being in the good demo zone very yeah. important do you, you want to do it right but you, you don't, don't want to be unprofessional yeah. you don't want to do things you're not good at on mm -hmm. your demo well, yeah. i just find that a lot of people submit stuff that they had no idea where the bar was set or what mm. is the industry standard of that too and that can be that's uh, somewhat damaging. My first, that's demo, pretty was, easy my first demo was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was terrible in my mind. And what I did was because I came out of radio school, like I was always on a mic for two years, so I yeah. learned all that stuff. But when I recorded the demo, I did this like funny longer thing. It wasn't the right amount of minutes. It, yeah. was, it was over too long. And that's what I standard. did was I went around to people like I, I gave a copy. Your brother Paul. I said, yo, can you listen to this and give me some tips? 
and I did that for a few, few people, mm -hmm. voice actors that I trusted, mm -hmm. that would give me the honest, here's what you should change. Yeah. And then I started researching all these other demos. That's the thing to do. What yeah. I should be doing. That's where the and, bar is. Yeah, and yeah, now, yeah. now it's all digital. Yeah. It's so you so just easy. go to a, a, an agency's yeah. website, listen, to, listen to what the bar is. And if, yeah. if you're around that quality, do that. But here's the other thing. Do not do a character. You can't hold the voice for four hours. Yeah. Because if you come up with a really awesome character and then it was just like that 10 second piece, but you can't do it for four hours. The other thing is, I think, don't not think good. you need to do every little character that you yeah. think you can do. No. Like, if you can do this character and this character, don't think you need to do don't repeat the one that's sort of in the middle. Because yeah. if you figure, if you can do this and this, you can probably do something that's a hybrid. Totally. Yeah. Like most people want to do way too much. Yeah. You want to show an arc, right? You don't want to do repeat characters as you're coming back. You want to start from the beginning, hit hard some of your best stuff out of the gate, give it a little arc, yep. and then get it in and out. And 60 seconds, oh, 30, yeah. 40 seconds is a great length for uh, them. I'd also say go really low on impressions. Because, yeah. Because, oh, do, yeah, because I, the thing oh, is, yeah. I almost say don't. Yeah, like that's why I say really low, because if you throw in something at the end, or whatever, like, but you, we don't do impressions. Like Scooby-Doo's already been done. Shaggy's already been done. Cartman gotta, is covered. You got to come yeah. up with your Gollum. own stuff, Gollum. right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so Gollum. You got to come yeah. up with your own stuff. Jason Sudeikis, I mean, there's, the thing is, these roles have been cast, and they are cast by the master of, of that house, and you all of a sudden coming in there and trying to impersonate that character that has already been mastered is never going to come close to what the original print is that has already been recognized, so bring up your own material. Right. Although, to, yeah. I would argue that Trevor Duvall's William Shatner is better than William Shatner. <laughs> yeah. There's some good if ones If you're bastardizing there. and you're doing something oh, weird, that, that's a different story. Kid.zz yeah. has a good question. How does one get comfortable with their own voice when voice acting? Whoa! I don't know if you ever will. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, hearing yourself back is not hearing yourself in your bones. It's just different. But playback is everything, and that's one of the biggest things I'll tell people is that to get into voice acting... Record, record, record. Play back everything you do because you yeah. may be doing things that you don't realize are, is part of your makeup. Mm. It might be a tick right. or something that you're doing. It's like, I didn't know I actually did that when I spoke. Uh, record everything you do and then you will be your greatest critic. Yeah, even if it's only on your phone, even if you don't have a mic sure. set up yet, yeah. record yourself and notice. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. know that there are going to be days as a professional actor where you love what you did and the sound of your voice and days where you're going to be like, I think I can do better. Or why am I in this business? I and there's that like, too. Yeah. I sound like a bit of a bowl, or whatever it is. You know, like we just have, we just go up and down that way. Sensitive beings, aren't we? Good lord. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any memories from the very first convention you ever went to? Oh gosh, I mm. do. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was in good New and York bad in it's Toronto, amazing. and Many I memories. had a newborn, and we had the flu. Oh man. We oh. got the flu at the convention. And I had to do panels, and I was like, Rrr. and meanwhile, my male voice actor friends were standing on chairs, lifting their shirts up. Kirby, yeah. Scott, man, was there a Dobson with a no shirt? Were you shirtless? In, 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 like, at you know, Anime North, the one that had like the the um, what do you call it? The guys from Star Wars with the spray bottles of oh, hand the uh, Febreze, wasn't it? The or Febreze, because it was the smelliest convention. Oh, that's right. Well, they they threatened what everyone the at the beginning of the thing, just like if anyone's caught smelling in the hallways, you'll be sprayed down. And they oh have my God. four smoking, stormtroopers smelling. taking all the actors to different things. But if they caught someone in the hallway smelling, they would spray them down with Febreze. Because. Mm. You're, it gets a little ripe some of these conventions, especially if it's a four day or three day well, convention. People are wearing costumes they've never worn. They don't breathe. Yeah. They're, they're and it goes 24 washed. hours around, right? So sometimes they don't get out of those costumes. Like, right. No shower. They probably don't go home. No. They might not go to a hotel room. Mm -hmm. Well, some of them, like, yeah, it's because the events go Sounds literally like around fun. the clock. So. I know. So that was wild. <laughs> yes. Oh, what's Zane's uh, ca canonical? Can we say that? Canonical yeah, favorite canonical animal. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Would it be the dragons Canon or the fat? Oh, falcon? they're they're talking about canon stuff, right? The like canon, yeah. like the. Yeah. Well, would it be the, the dragons or the falcon? Oh, it'd be the falcon because the falcon happened at the start, man. The falcon nice. led Zane to who he was when he found out he was a robot. Oh. Falcon for the win. I ding 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 ding. Like yeah, it was that. it was a pretty cool scene. And then I sung the, hello, my baby. And I was dancing around, and then I, because I open up my body and find out I'm a robot, and the funny switch goes off. 
That was fun. Oh, nice. Aww. Mm -hmm. What a moment. I, I, I've seen the, that clip with the song. The, with the, the yeah. song, yeah. His leg goes... <laughs> like that. That was really, it's a pretty <laughs> that was cool fun. clip. Yeah, I funny. love it. Um, so, School Dude, to Carl and Brian, yeah. what were your favorite you. characters in Hamtaro? I'm not, obviously, no ham, one's ham asking biased. me ham, ham. what my favorite character in Hamtaro is. I honestly don't think I could pick. I really don't. I don't, I, I don't have to say that. It's ever. okay. No, I honestly, I really, there were so many th yes. it's cool vast. little It's vast. Um, I would, I'd, I'd need some time with that question because it, it is a range of characters in that show. It was like, fun though. And there were a lot, I mean, a lot really stuck out. Yes. You know, I could name a bunch, but. Well, Oxnard did so your unique. favorite reaction. Like, Oxnard did okay. my favorite reaction Oxnard of all time. Oxnard was okay. pretty amazing. We'll that, give you, that is we'll give you kudos. Yeah. I have a question for Carl. Yes. Mm. It, um, what are you, what is your thoughts on the uh, anime in particular? movement in vancouver for the future do you see that it's now mostly heading um in the states or do you see that it's do you see there's hope we'll hold a more that will come back like oh where, where i do you, what do you see in i don't know i mean that's really that's the people that's above my pay grade like it's the deal makers like do, do deals get made that bring that work up here or not right that's so you to you it hasn't seen, i don't know i mean it, there up. was a sort of a long, a long period where we didn't do a whole lot but now there's been a few big projects come back, like yeah. Dragon Quest, and so like, like one we're working on right now. That like if you were a voice actor, if if you were a voice actor in uh, like locally, like in the market, would you say Vancouver is going to be like uh, it's a good place to be right now, or would you say go to oh. Toronto? Or would you say <laughs> Are we a competitor? Texas? Texas. Oh, and, like the ability to do it, Texas, absolutely. Right? But it, yeah. the, whether whether shows are coming, that's those deals are made sort of. By other people. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna also say, and when we used to have a lot of them come directly from Japan, right? Mm -hmm. that's yeah, that been too. Mostly, that's how a lot of the that's happened, material yeah. that happened. Or some in intermediary companies in the yeah, states. Yeah, like in in California or so or it, other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but also there are some places doing dubbing that are just not the quality. Okay. <laughs> but Ocean also, has awesome d uh, dubs. That's why, like, it's I like know, I that's know. why it's hard because it the rates are fair and uh, <coughs> I think there's some. Know, it's yeah, good, it's, it, we have such a good, uh, talented acting pool. I mm -hmm. think, yeah, yeah, I, agree. I think there's and, some smaller budget stuff that winds up being people's first projects and stuff like that. Right. right. But it's not the same level. It's not. They're not the bigger titles. And yeah, I just want. I, I just want a, more stuff to come because I want to do more. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would also, and, and I would also love that. Yeah. 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 I miss. I miss, I miss doing anime. I, I miss mean, doing it like all as the much time. As we used to. Yeah. Like we used to be just on a regular. We had a steady diet. Yeah. And, and not always time machine. It's when you yeah. uh, see people in person. Like that's when you see actors. We saw right? each other all the time. Now, nowadays, yeah. it's now we have rare. to have a show. God, you're so crazy. crazy. Thank mm -hmm. you for inviting me to the show, by the way. Thanks you're for coming. You're so welcome. It's been a slice. I yeah. Know. A slice of pecan pie. We should, pie. We should probably wrap her up soon. I guess we're getting at that point uh, anyways. We've got to wrap it up soon. Um, especially because our pizza's outside, guys. Oh! What? This pizza? That's amazing. Here, I should probably go yeah. get that. It's kind of a special kind of pizza that I hope you like. I didn't check dietary yeah. restrictions. For I only have one thing I don't eat on pizza, and it's oh, pineapple. Shoot. Because pineapple should pineapple. never be put on pizza. What? No, I disagree. No. Really? Yeah. Oh. Pineapple is fine. <laughs> Are you pro Kenny. pineapple, Kenny? I'm indifferent. You're indifferent? I like it. It's fine. It's I'm good. It's also because I can't fight, stand fight, pineapple. Fight, like, fight, I can't fight, stand fight, pineapple. What's pineapple ever done to you? Tastes bad. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you said anchovies, I could maybe get behind that. I don't know that I'm a fan of that. Um, Chris Niosi is still hoping to interview you. You know that. Yeah, I know, and we'll he's, make that happen. I, yeah, I've been a bad damn. He's not going to ask you anything hey, really hey, scary. Scary. Yeah, scary. I followed Chris on on Twitter. He, yeah, he, he he does a lot of stuff. He knows he does what he's talking nature. about too. I actually really just saw one. Us. I just saw one of his latest tweets, and it was a really sad tweet. I saw oh. it the other day, and I actually said to my wife. Hey, this guy Chris, man, this is how sucky is this? Someone gave him a fake hundred dollar bill at a convention. Aww. Oh, come and on. He, yeah, and then he oh, went to use sucks. it, and then he had to do all this fraud stuff. Oh, oh this, my like, God, I'm sorry, Twitter. Chris. I yeah. haven't even ever terrible? thought of that. Yeah, that's terrible. Ouch. Anyways, I'm sorry. Sorry Chris. that happened to you, Chris. 
Uh, next time I'll pay you with credit card. <laughs> um, yes, Reebok, yeah, this, is the end. this is the end. Yes, someone else is. <laughs> this is the end of the episode. We need to go have our pizza. Yeah, yeah. Ourselves like, thanks, everybody. Thimble. We so appreciate you being here with us today. You've been amazing. We want you to come back next time with all your questions and your ideas. And we want to thank Brent. Huge thanks so to Brent Miller for coming guys. in. Oh, so yeah, much, baby. Brent. Oh, shock. So thanks. fun. And Kenny, <laughs> Kenny's working hard Kenny, over there. Kenny, thanks for making it happen, Kenny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And thanks, we'll guys. see you again soon. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.